Hi guys, this is the Betamax man. Today we have a special VCR. Uh, and when I say special, um, I mean this thing records in the Beta 1S and it has hi fi stereo. This thing is fully loaded, it has flying erase heads. This thing has everything you could ever want. What is this? This doesn't look like a household Betamax. It's not. It's an industrial machine. Um, now, I don't know if this thing works. All I did was test it for power. And I put the, there's a switch on the bottom here. And I put it in beta 1. Uh, but we can move the switch. And it'll go back to beta 2. There we go. So that goes back in the beta 2. Because there's a switch right here on the bottom. Let's see. I believe, yeah, this is a... Um, SLHF GCS 50. I have a, uh, a friend who had this same machine and uh, he was just a really good kid. He had a really big heart and uh, he's just an all around good guy. Um, and his name was Mr. Magnetoscope. I used to talk to him all the time. He's even gave me a few VCRs. All I did was pay the shipping. He said, just pay the shipping. And I, I used to give him a little extra money, you know, because of what he was giving me. I got a 900 from him, um, and I got a Sears... Uh, beta machine from him so I've gotten two or three machines from him and unfortunately he he took his own life on uh, Thanksgiving of uh, 2020 or it was around Thanksgiving but he just he was dealing with very severe depression and he decided that he didn't want to feel that way anymore. Uh, and so he just ended his life. And I do miss him. I miss talking to him. Um, like I said, he was a good kid. He used to tell me how he wished that he would have been born, you know, in the uh, 80s like I was. Because he wished that he would have experienced VCRs and stuff the way that I did when I was growing up. Anyway, so I have only tested it for power. I've sanitized it with Lysol because of the coronavirus. Also, I don't like dirty machines. So, um, we're going to put a tape in. We'll see if it works. I don't know if it will or not, but we'll see. Um, I also need to hook up some video cables. So let me get some cables. We'll hook it up to the back. This one uses uh, BNC connectors. So we'll, we'll get it hooked up here just in case it works. Yeah, so this is what the back looks like. Here we've got, I've got my BNC connector. And this is what the back looks like. It's got a heavy duty cord. You can also plug other machines into it. <clears throat> and uh, it's the 7-Eleven B3 chassis. It has flying erase heads. 
So this particular machine is a cross between an SLH of 900 and an SLH of 1000. Now the reason I say that is because it has flying erase heads just like the 1000. Um, it does look a lot like the 900. Um, it will record in Beta 1S. Now this does not record the 6.0. It only records the original Beta 1S. So the original Beta 1S was 5.6 megahertz. Um, and then there was the high band which was 6.0. Okay. So I'm just making sure that the heads spin freely it does have a do a do light what does do mean well do sensor if there's condensation on the heads or in the machine the machine will shut down until the moisture has evaporated so we've got a cassette we've got it hooked up Let's see what happens. Because the seller said that this was untested. He said, I don't have a tape to test it with. Now, that is a common issue with these. Is most people don't have beta tapes. Now, reasoning for people saying that sometimes, now sometimes they're honest with you uh, when they say that. And other times, they know it doesn't work, and they say that to get more money out of it. An untested unit will deliver more, you'll get more money for it than you do if it's broken. So that's why some people try to uh, say, oh, it's untested, but they know that it doesn't work. So there are dishonest people out there. So you have to be careful when you're buying these. If you're wanting to buy one that's not tested, be careful because you could be buying a lemon. Now with me being able to repair these doesn't make a difference to me. So. it's going to work and it does the tracking is off just a little oh just the tracking there there we go that's delivering a fantastic picture wow the reason why I knew it was going to work is because when I heard that solenoid engage, you listen for the solenoids, and when they engage, that usually means that it works. Now, sometimes it don't, because it, it could have been an issue with the idler motor, could have had a Hall Effect device fail on it, you never know. But this is a the same head assembly that they put in the 1000 so this is the SLH of 1000 um, but it looks more like a 900 this is a lot like what a 900 looks like now let's go ahead and do our fast forward and our fast forward is working we'll do our rewind this thing plays back tapes a lot better than uh, my other machines to be honest you can see the heads clogged up there for a minute so I'm not gonna put a good tape in there just yet because it hasn't proven to me that it's not gonna eat tape so let's just see let's stop it let's hit fast forward
Okay, that seems to work. Seems to work okay. Um, this was an expensive machine. This was a three hundred and fifty dollars, including shipping. He wanted five hundred for it, um, and I talked him down to three. But this is an industrial machine, so they're built like tanks. No, I don't like the Seven Eleven B chassis. I actually prefer the 711D chassis um, because the 711D had uh, a motor for both the idler uh, for the take up and supply reels. It actually had the 711D had a motor for each one, and uh, but they did have some issues with that and uh, it would it would have some stiction problems and things but the 711 d was probably the best chassis that sony ever made in my opinion and that chassis is in the sl 2000 which was the portable the 711 d was also in the 2500 and the 2700 uh, those machines were the only ones that had 711D chassis. There were no other American models, um, you know, but anyway, those were really nice, and, you know, maybe we'll, um, in the next few days, we'll, we'll pull out my, uh, 2500, and we'll get it going, we'll get it fixed, um, this is cool, this thing works, so, it's probably not going to eat the tape. I bet you it'll be fine. So we just need to do some servicing, I think. So we can clean the heads. We'll clean the pinch roller. We'll clean all the tape guides. Um, now, if you're wondering what this chip is right here. That has this weird screw on here. This is the dew sensor, and uh, this is what detects moisture in the machine. Like I said, if it detects moisture in the machine, what it will do is it will shut down. Keep the machine from damaging tapes. So the dew sensor is actually a really good um, thing. This machine is built like a tank. So the only thing that we have to do to it is service it. What does a service mean compared to repair? Service means that the machine already works and that you're going to clean and lubricate things to make the machine continue to work for a long time. Repairing is where the machine doesn't work and you make it work by replacing parts or you know capacitors or whatever so that's the difference between a repair and a service and all we're going to do on this one is do a service we're not going to do anything else um but uh let's get the cleaning done on uh, we'll just do some cleaning and uh we'll we'll, t we'll take a look at the uh we can take a look at the uh, power supply here um and I'm not sure what this button is. It says a local. Not sure what that is. Um, this one does not have. Uh, let's re see. Where's the clear? There's a. There should be a button here to clear the uh, counter information, but there may not be. There may not be. Um, I'm not seeing a button to reset the counter. There it is. See, there we go. That resets it. So there's the button for resetting it. <clears throat> um, it has the jog shuttle dial. Uh, it has the, uh, you know, you could twist it, 
This thing will do uh, all kinds of features. It'll have frame by frame and uh, slow motion in both forward and reverse which is something that uh, is very very rare but this is the setup the same way as the uh, 1000 so this is a cross between a 1000 and a 900 now the 900 never did have beta 1s unless it was a Japanese one the Japanese 900 um, did have uh, what was I saying here? Um, but the oh yeah, the Japanese 900 had Beta 1S, um, but the American 900 did not. So if you're wanting a 900 and you're wanting the Beta 1S, you're gonna need to get a Japanese 900. So the Japanese 900s do have Beta 1S, which the American ones didn't. I don't know why they never put it in the American 900. There was also some misinformation online. Online, uh, it'll say that the, the 900 can play back Beta 1S. It cannot. It cannot play back Beta 1S unless it's like a Japanese one. Now, the Japanese one will play Beta 1S, but it'll also record Beta 1S. Now, this one records Beta 1S, this one has flying erase heads, it's a forehead unit, it has every bell and whistle on it you can ever want. Um, this is a very nice machine. All we're going to have to do to this thing is service it. <clears throat> I do love the uh, tracking knob on this. Um, they're very tight. They're very, very tight, which means that this machine may not have had a whole lot of use. Um, as you can see, the, the display is extremely bright, nice and bright. I don't think this machine has had a lot of hours. I think that this machine was a low hour machine, and I can tell by the, the display how the buttons are nice and firm and tight. Um, they have resistance. See, there's resistance, nice resistance. Um, and then there's the beta hi fi, you've got the dew light. I don't know what local does. Um, and then we have channel one and two. Um, channel 1 or channel 2. I'm not sure. I think it was because the coaxial, it has coaxial out and uh, it, it will it'll play on channel 1 or channel 2. The Japanese machines had the tuner would work on channel uh, 3 or 4 and doing that would, you would hit the uh, VTR button and then you can use your TV to watch whatever channel you want while your machine is recording another channel so that was how they done that you can see that the, this is nice and white which most of the time they're yellowed this is nice and white it's, like I said they're usually yellow um, now this has turned yellow a little bit, um, but I just don't think that this has had a whole lot of hours on it. I think once we do the cleaning on it and we do the re-lubrication, uh, this thing will, will be just fine. Um, this is just really nice. This has the same um, a very, very similar power supply to the 1000. Oh, the nice thing is, is that this, let's turn this on the side here. Um, you can see the power supply here. It's very, very 
big and robust. Um, uh, this is uh, this has got s s and this power supply is actually more similar to the 900 than the 1000. Now that I'm looking at it, but this is a very very nice machine. You can see that uh, this machine is very heavy. This is anywhere from 36 to 40 pounds. Usually about 36 pounds is what they what they weigh. As you can see, you know, um, this one might be one of my main decks for playback. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to let this machine go. Um, I might. Um, if I can get the right price for it, yeah. Um, you know, because I'm going to do the cleaning, I'm going to do the servicing, so that this machine will continue to last. Um, and I, I could see that there's not really um, much. I'm looking at some of these caps here, and most of them are high quality caps. I'm not seeing uh, any Elna caps. I'm seeing some Rubicon, some Nichicon. Um, so, yeah, the industrial machines were built better than the household regular machines because the industrial machines they will record all day long you can use them too you can put thousands and thousands upon thousands of beta tapes in this machine it will do the job perfectly every time and uh, this has got a really big plug on here this has got the ground wire as well as the um, positive and negative leads here. As you can see, we had to use a BNC adapter. Um, I'm sure, I'm sure this thing records as well. Um, like I said, we can just go ahead and clean it. Now here's the. Uh, now, how interesting, the tuner is the same as the 1000. So, this one has a lot more things that the 1000 does than the 900. The 900 was pretty basic. To be honest with you, the 900 did have four heads and it did have uh, slow motion and things like that. But the 1000 is so much better than than any of them. Um, this one is almost as good as the 1000. Um, but due, due to the fact that this is a industrial machine... Um, I mean, just this this is so awesome to have one. Um, my friend, Mr. Magnetoscope, when he got one, uh, I begged him. I said, "Oh, do you want to sell it? I'll buy it from you." And he said, "No, I'm not selling it." And uh, every time I'd try to get a hold of one of these, I couldn't because I didn't have the money. But now, with my new job and I'm making decent money. You know, um, I can now start to really afford to buy some of the higher end units. Um, this machine will probably go for around $700 on eBay. So this one's going to be about a $700 machine because I'm going to do a service on it, but then I'll do a guarantee of 90, probably 90 day guarantee. Um, but uh, this machine is in extremely good shape. This thing came from, uh, I think, uh, Connecticut. So, came a very, very long way. Um, it went through several towns before it got to me. It went through several states before it got to me. Um, it went through uh, Colorado, went through Ohio, went through Oregon, you know, but uh, anyway. 
yesterday this was shipped to the Dalles, Oregon and uh, which is probably about 300 miles away but and then I got it today it was delivered on my porch so I'm very very happy with this machine so let's go ahead I'm just gonna do a, a cleaning for right now I'll do uh, a service video on this at a later date um, I have some other machines I need to get going uh, there's a there's a 600 and the customer says that it does work but uh, he said that it will not rewind um, a lot of times this has got the same issue that my 1000 has the Hall Effect device goes out and then uh, you know sometimes it can go out to where you you won't be able to rewind fast forward or play or sometimes it'll just be the rewind that goes out on it um, so it's got you know a similar issue I've got some other machines I've got a 360 um, another 360 that I came in um, I've got a 7250 to sell or, um, I have a SLS 600 that will get that going and get that one sold but some of these machines are customers machines so but having uh, having this kind of thing I mean we can we can play around with uh, special effects Tracking seems to be off a little bit on this machine, but uh, we're gonna do some. We could do some adjustments on that, so we can go forward. Or we can go back. So we can do the there's a slow adjustment here for the slow. But it doesn't seem to really be doing anything. Uh I think it's the TV. But it will go back. Yeah, we can go forward. Look at that, huh? Isn't that cool? Let's go back. And that's cool so yeah it's got a bunch of different uh, features I can do uh, play it back times one and times two so I can play it back faster than normal We can play it faster, or we can go 
backward. So it's going back. We can go backward a little faster. Or we can just uh, go back into play. And then we can turn it. And if we turn this to uh, number two, it'll play it back. And then we can go, we can go reverse. We can go in reverse. As you can see, it's kind of messed up because, uh, the TV's just not playing it like it should. But, uh, yeah, with those flying erase heads, um, you're going to have a perfect cut. So, let me explain how flying erase heads work. Um, now, so you have your linear, um, eraser. So, there is, this is, um, this is a, basically, the erase head is right here. Now, what will happen is, the tape is starting to record before the erase head can erase it. So what happens is, is you'll have, uh, like if you hit stop and then you hit record, uh, you'll see a little, uh, like a ra rainbow colored line. It'll go like that and then it'll go down. And so that happens. But with flying erase heads, it basically erases the tape before it passes through the record head. Um, and then you can hit you can hit stop and then hit record and you will not see any line. You will not see that rainbow line that goes down like that. So that's the thing with flying erase heads is they'll erase it before it goes through before it passes through the recording. The record head. You see what I'm saying? So you know, with your regular erase head, it starts to record before it has the ability to erase it first. So, it's it's lag time. It's just a little bit behind. But the flying erase heads eliminated the rainbow colored lines that you see, you know, when you first hit record. If something's been recorded on the tape before so if it's a you know even um yeah so if you've got a tape that you're recording over that's when you'll see those rainbow colored lines in the beginning you know so but the flying erase heads really eliminates that so this has got four regular um video heads so it has two A heads and two B heads um, and then it has two uh, this has two flying erase heads um, so you know that flying erase head really does do a, a super super job so anyway but we'll, we'll get this so let's just go ahead and clean some of the stuff here let's get some of this stuff cleaned up and uh, then we'll we'll put in like one of my um one of my good movies and we'll put it in and see what it's see what it does for for playback after we clean everything up yeah so i got this piece of paper here and I've got it folded up like this so that we can go in here and get the uh, head drum clean without trying to use Q-tips. Because you use Q-tips, you have a, a tendency you can you can snag it on a head. If a Q-tip hits the head 
while trying to clean the drum. You, you can move the head away from it, but if you snag it on there, it'll snap the head right off. Now, we might actually do a video on why not to use Q-tips. What we'll do is we'll purposely use a Q-tip to clean the heads, and then we'll show you just exactly what happens if you do that. Don't use Q-tips on the heads. So I'm going to soak this in alcohol. We'll be right back. I'm going to get things set up. Gonna get, uh, let's get uh, my stuff here. And we'll do both sides here. We'll do that. So now I've got my paper. So this actually will go in there perfectly. So this will, this will go. This will go, we'll be able to, I'll be able to start cleaning the, uh, head drum by just moving the paper back and forth. Um, as you can see, it can, it can clean the drum. It goes in behind there and as you can see we're going in there and getting that drum nice and clean and you can see all the dirt that just came off so I'm gonna continue this process until we get a clean piece of paper and we're gonna clean the uh, control the control track and audio head which is right here will clean the guides things like that so let me uh, get this we'll try to get it so that you can kind of see what I'm doing so we'll just set it right here and then you can see me kind of working on it and I need to get a uh, A uh, tripod because the treatments are so dang expensive. Because um, a tripod is what I need so you guys can see these things. Because I'm not able to make very good videos. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is switch. unplug it and actually I just I have it connected to a surge protector so we just switch the switch off and that will turn off the power so you need to get your, your fingers down in there and I found this is like the best best way for me to clean the drum and now it's starting to come off cleaner so we'll just keep doing it until until it comes off nice and clean starting to it's still dirty though we'll just do it again we'll flip it to the other side you need writing paper to do this it's gonna be the best way to clean your drum and your heads the wet paste paper method that the soaked alcohol on the paper soaked with alcohol is the best and safest easiest way to professionally clean your heads and drum 
without any kind of, of uh, damage. And uh, as you can see that it is now starting to come clean. And now I can actually start to um, so I'm just going to get a new piece of paper. I'll just get a new paper soaked in, in the alcohol. We'll do a little bit, a little bit wider this time. We'll do a wider path here. And we'll just get it down in there. Let's make sure you guys can see what I'm doing. Kind of see what I'm doing here. I need to just buy a tripod because I can't find mine. I mean, the mini storage was cleared out, but I still haven't went through the boxes and stuff. But I used to have a tripod in my storage unit, but no longer have that, so I don't know. But in order to make really good quality videos, I'm going to need to have the tripod because I can't make good videos, you know, unless I have the, the tripod, so, okay, this is good, so we're going to just take the and clean. Now we can just do the uh, video heads with the paper. We'll just take the paper and soak it with some alcohol. I use a spray bottle because the spray bottle is the easiest and effective, most effective way to be able to get the alcohol soaked. So we're going to turn them and we're going to turn them both directions. Just going to turn them both directions here, counterclockwise uh, and then clockwise. But counterclockwise is the way that it turns when it's in play mode. So we're not seeing, I'm not seeing any more dirt or debris, so. I think I'm good to go. So we'll now take um, we'll get my Q-tips nice and wet here. We'll soak them in the alcohol because that will allow me to clean the audio and control track. Which you can see here that the there is a lot of dirt on there. I'm pulling dirt off of that. And the cleaner capstan, as you can see, that I don't know if it's showing up on camera, but uh, it has got quite a bit of dirt on that Q-tip. So let's use the other side. Yeah, this is why you do a cleaning, especially because this machine was probably just sitting in someone's basement or something, or sitting in somebody's closet and uh, not being used and so it's collected a lot of dust and and dirt 
And before I put in one of my new tapes, I want to make sure it's nice and clean. I don't want to put tapes in that are, I don't want to use, you know, I don't want dirty, dirty heads um, contaminating my tapes. So, as you can see, there's still some dirt coming off of that. So, yeah, we'll, we'll, um, I just make sure my audio and control track is nice and clean. I go all back and forth motion or up and down motion is fine. Just as long as you clean and let's clean the capstan. It's kind of hard to clean the capstan without pulling it completely out, but. And we'll clean our tape guides. And, uh,. We can clean our regular uh, erase head. Which I can see that there is some dirt coming off of there. And we, we, what we can also do is clean the pinch roller. Um, we'll just clean it with some alcohol for now. When I do a service on it, I will do the rubber renewal. Um, they, they always come out dirty. The, the pinch rollers always are dirty. Sometimes the tape gets, you know, sometimes the tape can, can you know, the pinch roller kind of, the pinch roller, you know, pinches the tape between the roller and the capstan. So it could be, you know, you can get quite a bit of dirt on that, on the, you know. Okay, hold on. Let my, I gotta let my, my kitty out here. Well, it's all cleaned. And uh, we'll do a service on it in another video. Um, but this was a movie that was brand new sealed when I got it. Uh, the Mountain Man. This is on Sony Cassette. Which is awesome. So, yeah, this is a Sony L435. So, I think this is about an hour and a half or hour and 45 minutes. So let's go ahead and put it in and we'll hit play. As you can see, when the tape went in, it was kind of rough. So I think we need to do some some lubrication on the um, cassette housing as well. Uh, but we'll do that in another video. So let's hit play. plays perfect and the tracking is dead center and it is just doing a beautiful job now because we now have we have a tape that you know is no even though it's no it's still got some dropouts sometimes when tapes sit you know they can they can still have a little bit of def defective stuff like a little bit of dropouts here or there sometimes and then sometimes when you buy them new they're in perfect condition so but let's go ahead and rewind it i'm gonna go ahead and get this thing back together 
Uh, I dropped some of the screws, so I'll probably have to put different screws in it. Uh, I've got black screws. Uh, I had them sitting on the laptop, and the laptop fell, and the screws went flying, so I had to find those. But I'm going to get this thing back together. Let's rewind it here. go ahead and eject it. The eject is over here. We're gonna I'm gonna put this thing back together now so now in the service video we're gonna do some lubrication. Um, now we're probably gonna go ahead and take a look at the grease in the cassette housing and make sure that the grease is not dried up um, on these Sony cassette housings uh, they used it's kind of an orange like a dark brown color grease and that grease is usually fine it usually doesn't dry it up if your grease is not dried then it's fine there's nothing wrong with it but if it's drying up then it has to be cleaned and re-lubricated. Now, I have some Lithion grease uh, that we can use. You know, now we're going to do some oiling on the, the real table motor. We're going to service that as well. So, I'm going to do quite a bit. But this is a really nice machine. I really like this machine. I'm very happy with it. I was kind of hoping I was going to repair it. Uh, I kind of wanted to do a, a repair on it, but um, it uh, it doesn't need to be repaired. So, and as that saying goes, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Meaning, don't take it apart if it's not broken. Sometimes I see people want to take machines that work, and then they mess with. And I used to do this too in my younger days. And uh, we'll, we'll, oh, well, you know, I, I can do this and, and make it better. And then next thing you know, you screwed it up. You know, so that does happen. That's why that expression stands. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Because you can make it not work by messing with it. So it's just, it's, it's um, something that I've always um, thought about, you know, um, now sometimes I will take them even though they're not broke and I'll change caps you know to prevent them from having a problem in the future but um, as far as like you know taking something apart that doesn't need to be you know it works you know don't mess with it but uh, I do um, I will take these sometimes and I will uh, replace caps uh, just to, to make sure that it doesn't fail in the future. I have to not only service it, but I have to look for certain areas, certain things that could have an issue further down the road. And so I take care of those now so that, because I guarantee these for 30 days. There's a 30 day warranty and a 30 day guarantee. So... You know, I want to make sure that I'm preventing anything from happening that can cause it to break down the road. So, anyway, let's get it put back together. And then that'll that'll be it on, uh, on this video. And we also, I need to get another, I need another VNC adapter. I had some, I had like 10 of them. And I don't know where some of them are. I lost most of them except for I found one. I need another BNC adapter so that I can do video input and uh, test the recording feature. Because we still haven't tested uh, the, the record. Okay, she's back together. I did managed to find all the screws that dropped so i've got all the screws are all back in 
as you can see. And uh, anyway, so this is just a really nice unit. Uh, I'm going to keep now. This there's a switch here on the bottom for beta one or beta two. Uh, this does not do beta three. Um, this is an industrial machine now. With movie companies, um, you know, like uh, say the movie uh, Ten Commandments, they put it on two tapes. Um, now they could have put it on beta 3 and used an L750 and they could have got the whole movie on one tape but the reason they don't do that is because beta 3 is a, a poor picture quality movie companies were all about putting the, the the best picture quality that it could be such as beta 2 now movie companies would not use beta 1 because it only gave you an hour so that's you know movie companies use beta 2 only um, with the VHS it was SP only um, but I do think that there were some VHS tapes uh, pre-recorded ones that were recorded in the uh, LP or the EP mode um, but uh, for beta it was strictly beta 2 and uh, you know they would use like L625's or L3435 or you know L, you know L500 L750 L, uh, L375, I mean, there's a lot of different length tapes that the movie companies could get that we couldn't get. See, we could get the L125, L250, L500, L750, and the L830. The movie companies, they could get L125, L250, L375, um, L6. 625 you know they just they had a lot of different so you know basically the um, you know the movie companies could, could get those different length tapes um, like uh, my, my Disney one of my Disney films um, uh, what was it called um, I don't know I can't remember but uh, oh yeah, 101 Domations uh, used an L375 cassette, you know. But here is a really cool and extremely rare find. Gunsmoke the Collector's Edition. And uh, you're thinking, that's VHS, right? It looks like VHS. Nope, it's beta. Look. And look at that, huh? And they put a little insert so that they could fit the beta tape in there. So that's what we're going to play. We're going to play Gunsmoke. So we'll just, we'll just play this. Now the tracking is off a hair on this particular tape. Wow, the tracking is actually perfect on this. Oh, no, no, it ain't. There it goes. Yeah, the tracking's off just a hair. There we go. Yeah, because the, tra the tracking is off a little while, uh, a little bit. There's the, uh, and then the collector's edition. If we put it in the center, we get a lot of noise. But if we adjust the tracking just a little bit, and it will get a very good picture. 
yeah, you adjust it so that you got, you know, good picture. So right about there is uh, is good. This is the first episode that has Matt gets it. Tap day for Kitty, Hack Prine, or no. Yeah, yeah, Hack Prine and then the killer. My favorite episodes is Matt Gets It and The Killer. My favorite episodes. So, I love this. And, uh, you know, the fact is, this thing plays beautifully. I think, you know, I don't know if, you know, this one, I may keep it. But, so you got the tracking off just a little bit because if you, you put it to the, to the center and you can start seeing the noise and stuff. But when you, when you turn it, and there you go, it's, it's perfect. So I like the tracking knob, but the tracking knob is so cool on this thing. This thing just a beautiful machine. Uh, framing servo. I'm not sure what that is. Oh, that might be for, like, uh, special effects. Um, I do have some DVDs of the Collector's Edition uh, coming in the mail. It'll be here tomorrow. I wish it would have showed up today because it would have been nice to watch them on my weekend. But I guess next next weekend I'll, I'll make it a Gunsmoke weekend and uh, I'll watch them. I, I like Gunsmoke. It was a series that my father liked. Um, you know, my my father was born in 54 and so he grew up with the shows from the 50s and the 60s and 70s you know and I really miss my father because he died last year and uh, I just it's one of the shows that he liked and I liked when I was a kid we used to I used to have my dad would buy me these uh, the, the little cap guns the six shooter cap guns and you you could put caps in them and uh they, they would they would you know you'd pull the trigger and it would smoke and it would look like a real gun you know and uh dad and me used to draw dad would say draw and uh, we would we would draw we would you know shoot the guns and yeah, I miss him. I miss my dad. I just, it's, it's hard because it's, he, he died last June. So this June he'll be dead one year. Losing my father really, really sucked. But anyway. It doesn't get easy. It's just, it's hard. I mean, I guess it, it it gets easier for the fact that I'm learning to live without them, but it's still hard. So if we put framing servo on. Yeah, it doesn't really make a, a difference if it was in frame servo or not. So I'll have to read up and see what that is because I don't know what frame uh, framing servo. Now servo has to do with the uh, heads and the capstan. But 
Anyway, so, uh, yeah, that's a nice machine, and it's just a really nice machine. So we'll just put the tracking back to, to the center. I keep wanting to hit the eject over here because on an SLH of 900 the eject button is right here but on this the eject is over here we'll need to do some adjustments on the um, belt tension because the, the, the uh, belt tensioner is a little bit on the tight side and so the tapes kind of it's got some resistance when it goes in and out it kind of sounds like it's um, kind of tired like like a, a forcing sound you know right, this is so cool I love this I wish I could find more of these it, you know because they did have they did exist they put this series they put the collector's edition out um, back in the 1980s so they had you know and of course the 1980s they had both formats they had beta and VHS so if you had the beta VCR you'd obviously have to order them or buy them from somebody who carried them on beta you know VHS was very very common it was most widely used VHS has been one of the most popular formats for many many years um, now beta was better format beta was definitely better but beta lost and it was the pricing uh, the amount of time you can put on a tape you know um, it was just but why is beta better than VHS the reasoning for that is beta had bigger heads bigger video heads so it was able to put more clarity and more detail on the tape the tape speed was faster even in beta 2 Beta 2 is still faster than VHS SP. So, but uh, anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And uh, I will see you in another video soon. I will try to do more videos, um, but I'm probably only going to be able to do because I'm working and everything and I'm only getting paid like once a month now so you know I have to if I buy more machines I have to sell some of them first so I can get the money to, to but I'll probably do a video a new a new video at least once every couple of weeks so I'll, I'll try to get some new videos on on there on my channel um, and uh, you guys liked my video of uh, my Disney collection because um, I put uh, oh yeah I do have a new uh, tape I have a new uh, Disney tape that, that uh, just came in not too long ago and it's uh, it's a beta tape a Disney movie which is one of the movies that's extremely rare that you're not gonna find on beta so um, it's, this is the cat food I have to keep it up high because the, we have a, a puppy and she likes to get into that kind of thing so that's why the uh, that's why the food is there but here we go the fox and the hound and this is a beta
This is this is not VHS. This is beta, and I'm going to show you the tape here in just a second. As you can see, that famous sticker that was on a lot of Disney tapes. Um, the sticker uh, that was on this uh, was in really poor condition, and it was you could see through the label that was on the Aristocats and so I just I made a new uh, label for it that says beta so that I know it's beta I also did a new label for the uh, logo for the uh, Lady and the Tramp Fox and the Hound you guys ready to see the tape are you ready there it is Fox and the Hound. And it has um, the black label with uh, white lettering. And then it has the Disney sticker on the side. So as you can see here, it's an L500, I think. It looks like it might be an L. Well, it's probably an L430. It's probably an L435 because a lot of these were. They were all 435s, so it's just nice to have this on on beta. And somebody was making a comment about the the Lion King. Um, I didn't know it was on beta. Yeah, it was a special order. Uh, I think they were saying something about like all oh, that. I didn't even know that was available. It must have been when they were. It must have been one of the last tapes released on, on beta. And it, it, it was, it was, um, the thing about it, though, um, it was a special order. So this would have been a special ordered. And I, uh, I actually put a brand new clamshell. This is in a new clamshell case. But you can see that I didn't even think that this existed. But it does but you can see the beta logo and this one actually has a writing on the side of it and this one also has a VHS label as you can see see how this has got a VHS label on it and this one actually has printed Lion King and it's an LS 530 so this is an extremely rare find. You're not going to find this film ever. Um, I was so surprised that I found it. With it. And then I got this little um, styrofoam insert here so that so the tape doesn't like move around on me. So the tape don't like, you know, but this is something that I watch but not very often. I kind of keep it so that I can, I've got it to where it's in perfect condition. And uh, look, this is one of the new ones that I got too. Alice in Wonderland. And this one was sealed. It was brand new. It never had been opened. And I opened it. And yes, the tape works. This is one of the second releases. This was the second time it was released. Uh, this has the Hi-Fi. The other, the first release, I gave that one away because I had that one. But that one was recorded in mono and the tape was kind of worn out. And I found this one new. Oh yeah, I just purchased a brand new sealed copy of Peter Pan on beta. And it's sealed and it's coming. And uh, we'll, what I'll do is sell the old one. Sell so this copy, this Peter Pan, will be for sale if you guys want to purchase the Peter Pan from me. You can. I'm asking uh, 60 for it. I paid 60 bucks for it, so that's what I want out of it if somebody wants to 
purchase it for 60 bucks, they can do so. Let's put that one back there. And then I have uh, Old Yeller too. This one. Um, but this one is... As you can see that this one has... This is on a uh, BASF video tape. And this was definitely a previous rental copy. So if anybody would like to purchase this for 60 bucks, because that's what I paid for it, they can have it. So let me know guys if you would like to have this in your collection for 60 because when I get the new one, I won't need this one. I will not need this one once I get the new one. So... And, you know, they have Fox and a Hound. So, yeah, the Dalmatians. This is on an L375, I think. Or an L, L325 or something like that. But this is also a VHS label that was printed sideways. So, I believe this is an L... This is like an L325 or 375. I think it's an L325, but you can see that this was only like an hour and ten minutes, so it's not very long. But this one is not going to be for sale. This one will never be, so I will never sell any of them unless I replace them with brand new. So this one was, you know, brand new and I put it in a new case because I put it in a new a new case because the old case was busted and the tape didn't even work so I purchased the laser disc copy and copied it onto brand new tape and put the tape inside of the existing shell so I now have a working uh, jungle book but, uh, yep, and then I have uh, Fantasia, which is an extremely rare find as well. This is the same way. It has the VHS label printed sideways. Kind of, they printed it. But the black, the black case, they, this movie was in black clamshell. It was never put in a white clamshell. I wish they kind of put all of them in black clamshell because the black clamshell actually holds up and doesn't deteriorate like the other ones. And I purchased, you know, the clamshells. I got them. Uh, I got the the VHSs. I purchased the brand new sealed VHSs just so I can have the clamshells, so I can replace the clamshells. Which I've done. I've replaced the clamshells in a lot of them. Uh, there is one broken clamshell, which was the the Beauty and the Beast. Like I said, I actually lost our, uh, the label, so I had to make one. I actually had to make a label for it because I lost. The label came off. It was glued. It was uh, glued, uh, the, the label, the glue came, deteriorated and the label fell off. Basically lost it. So I just had to make this label to put on it. And I am going to make a better label for it later. Um, I want to make it look genuine. But losing the label on and see this one also has the uh, Disney sticker on the side so sometimes they have the serial numbers on the uh, like where you on a certain spot but 
Yeah, I like my my collection. I'm looking for the second release of of sword the sword in the stone. I'm looking uh, for the second release because this one's been recorded in mono and I want the one with the hi-fi stereo so I am searching for that I haven't watched um, these two films yet I've I've seen these two films but I haven't watched them yet so Swiss Family Robertson which I'm gonna try to find a better a better conditioned one this one's not in very good condition. I think this was... Okay, it's done on a Max L. The, the thing I don't like about it is somebody put a sticker, um, one of those little uh, ink label, those little ink things, and they, because it came from a video store. So I wish that didn't have that on there, but it was, this was bought from the same uh, seller, I think, too, but this one's in good condition. Uh, this one is probably a different seller, but... So, and then I have my, like, Dumbo. This is kind of a cute movie. Um, Bambi was good, too. I liked Bambi. Bambi. Here's Bambi. And then there's the tape for that. And I have um, Cinderella. I actually have two copies of these. I think I gave one copy away, but I think I still have the other copy. So I do have another copy of Cinderella. If you guys want to purchase that, you can. So if you guys want to buy the Cinderella and the Peter Pan, Drop me a comment. Anyway, that's going to be it for today. Um, we've seen the video. And we're going to go ahead now and put the... See, I think... Yeah, this one has to go like this. It has to go like that. And this one's got a special insert for that. So... But Gunsmoke is one of my uh, favorite uh, TV shows. So that's it. See you guys later. Bye.